If you've had any experience with Tekken, you definitely know about the Mishimas, which means you've also probably heard a Tekken veteran give you an earful about how the Mishimas are real Tekken and are the pinnacle of the Tekken series. They're the definitive main characters of Tekken. And if we're being honest, no other character gets nearly as much attention or development in the story and in the marketing. Throughout the 30 years of Tekken's history, these characters have been renowned for their incredible difficulty to play at almost every level. While other fighting games use their series protagonist as an easy entry point into the series, often going to great lengths to ensure that they're very easy to pick up and understand for new players, Tekken has done the complete opposite, making its mascot characters among the most difficult to play in all fighting games. That is, until recently with Jin in Tekken 8. But don't worry, we'll be talking about him soon. What about the Mishima archetype in Tekken makes them so difficult to play? Well, let's start by looking at how we define said Mishima archetype. Simply being a part of the Mishima family isn't enough, with characters like Lars being a prime example. Despite being Heihachi's son, his moveset and game plan are pretty much as far away from a Mishima as you can get. Generally in the Tekken community, a Mishima is defined as a character with a couple of key moves, that being the Electric Wind God Fist and a Wave Dash with a few generic options like the Hell Sweep, along with a certain playstyle. And this is where we get into a difference of opinion, as many people believe that another requirement to be considered the Mishima is the 1-1-2 Flash Punch combo, with this rule directly excluding the protagonist himself, Jin Kazama. The Tekken community has historically been very divided on whether Jin should be considered the Mishima or not, because of his aforementioned lack of a Flash Punch combo, historically very different electrics, and his overall lack of reliance on these standard Mishima tools. But if you ask me, especially with the addition of Reina in Tekken 8, the rules of what makes a Mishima have been changed pretty drastically, and if a stance mix-up character could be considered one, then I think Jin should be included as well. But speaking of Jin, let's get him out of the way early in this video. He's one of the four characters we'll be talking about who breaks the traditional trend of Mishima's being so difficult. Like all the others, Jin was previously considered one of the most difficult characters to pilot in older Tekken games, but here in Tekken 8, he's been streamlined significantly to make him far more beginner-friendly than the others. While I still wouldn't call him easy, comparing him to the rest of the Mishimas, he has far less to worry about. Lower execution demands than ever before, streamlined offense with insane counter-hit utility, and free electrics out of stance, just to name a few things. He's very, very privileged with his demon paw, and very strong heat smash. And unlike the other characters, can be autopiloted with pretty easily. That being said, some of the stuff we'll be talking about with the other characters do definitely still apply to Jin. I just think the sheer effectiveness he gets out of such a small amount of OP moves immediately excludes him from being as difficult as the others. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I personally was really happy with what they did to Jin, as he was way too difficult for me in Tekken 7. And I always wanted an easy to pick up but hard to master version of the Mishima archetype, as opposed to all the others who are incredibly difficult to pick up. When it comes to the Mishimas and their difficulty, execution is the first thing that comes to mind. All four of these characters have the Electric Wind God Fist and rely on it to different extents. While Jin and Reina aren't forced to rely on the move all the time, Kazuya and Devil Jin absolutely do. It might not seem difficult watching as a spectator, but a just frame input being one of your key moves in neutral immediately makes these characters far more difficult than the average Tekken character. Getting a fast electric on both sides, out of sidesteps, or out of backdashes, and being able to chain multiple of them together for combos can take years to develop properly. And then factor the need to use a just frame input with offline tournament nerves, and it's no wonder why we almost never see these characters in top level competitive play. When it comes to the electric, no character relies on it more than Kazuya Mishima himself, with a signature lack of a normal block punish launcher. If Kazuya blocks a move that's launch punishable on block, he's forced to electric. This is something tons of lower level players don't understand about the character. While you can theoretically launch a minus 14 move on block with his electric, this is unbelievably difficult to do, with not even the best Mishima players on the planet being able to do it consistently. Even punishing minus 15 or even 16 moves on block with electric can be super difficult to do. This is why you'll see Kazuya players so often just opt for a down back 1-2 heat engage or punish. This is a huge weakness to have and is part of what makes Kazuya so uniquely difficult to pilot. Combine that with him being required to have a strong wave dash and wave dash cancel to utilize his iconic 50-50, having very difficult combos to pull off, a pretty big lack of panic buttons, and hopefully you get a good picture of why Kazuya players struggle so much. Execution aside, his 50-50 requires way more skill to use than most people think. 
it's really not just a guaranteed guessing game for your opponent. It requires incredibly good awareness and pattern recognition from the Kazuya player, having to constantly mix up timing and pay close attention to his opponent. And if the Kazuya player does get careless with it, they get blown up for it. Definitely not an easy 50-50 to utilize. And while all of this also applies to every Mishima, Kazuya is easily the most reliant on this 50-50. The nature of this character just forces you to be actively thinking all the time about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Everything should have a purpose while playing this character. Another factor to mention is the general simplicity of him. Kazuya is sort of in a camp where his lack of options and small amount of moves actually make him harder to pilot. Combine this with his popularity, and you'll find that everyone knows exactly how to beat Kazuya. He's one of, if not the most known matchup in the game. And as we can see from looking at win rates, character unfamiliarity really helps the character win in this game. This character in high level just comes down to pure mind games, and I absolutely love this character design. Even if I'm garbage at the character and rage every time my combo drops for no reason. He's gotten some very good additions in Tekken 8. Seriously, I think people undervalue how much having a simple demon paw helps Kazuya on the neutral. But his core is still Kazuya, the same as he's always been. I'm not even saying that Kazuya is bad, I actually think he's very strong. It's just that you can't deny the sheer amount of work people need to put in on this character. This is why everyone gets so hyped when they see a really strong Kazuya player. You can tell how much time they put into this character, and it's really respectable. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you guys are enjoying this and want to support more scripted Tekken 8 content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free to do, and you can always change your mind later. It really goes such a long way as only about 11% of my viewers are actually subscribed. I'm not big enough to get sponsors yet, so this is the best way you can support my dreams of hopefully one day doing this as a full-time job. Thank you guys so much, and let's get back to the video. A lot of this stuff applies to Devil Jin as well, who is in my opinion, currently the worst Mishima in the game. While relying on the electric slightly less than Kazuya, it's still absolutely essential to develop a strong electric on this character, and will be one of your go-to moves in neutral. You need a strong wave dash just like Kazuya to apply your 50-50, which by the way requires way more execution than any other 50-50 in the game, with him being required to cancel his wave dash into a while standing 2. This is not easy to do. While also having very high execution demands on his optimal damaging combos, you can see why this character is so difficult. He has the advantage of having a very easy 15 frame punish, which helps a lot compared to Kazuya, but due to his many nerfs throughout this game, he has to work very very hard, and in some ways even harder than Kazuya. I made a full video on Devil Jin if you're interested in a more close up look at the character, but in short, his awful poking and lack of neutral control compared to the other Mishimas, having the worst forward forward 2 out of the 4, and his lack of a strong safe 50-50 really hurts the character. Devil Jin has always been defined by having incredibly strong highs and lows, but subpar mids, but he's historically always made up for this with his very strong poking. Here in Tekken 8, he doesn't have that luxury, and a lot of his lows are arguably pretty weak in this game. His heat smash was significantly nerfed, along with almost all of his new gimmicky tricks in Tekken 8 being figured out by now. This essentially leaves the character back to where he started, basically just playing a legacy Mishima game plan. Whiff punish and pressure with the electric, look for a flash punch combo, get a knockdown, and try to apply your risky 50-50. I'm being a bit hyperbolic, he definitely has more than that, but a lot of his options just feel weaker than the other Mishimas. This character now almost entirely revolves around making reads and simply outplaying your opponents. He suffers a lot when it comes to tracking as well in this game, with all of his main tools losing the sidestep. Not only does he have very high execution demands, but he also just lacks an overall presence in the neutral. He's much stronger during his heat, gaining access to a couple new strong options, but the large nerf to his heat smash certainly hurt his neutral. All in all, he's just a character who feels like you need to put a ridiculous amount of work in to get mileage out of him. He requires his pilot to be completely on point with their reactions and reads, while so many other characters in this game just have pretty streamlined and mindless options. You cannot autopilot with this character, you need to be playing online at all times. And finally, the last character we have to talk about is Reina, the daughter of Heihachi and one of the most interesting newcomers we've ever seen in Tekken. Being a combination of Heihachi and Lydia from Tekken 7, her moveset has been very divisive amongst the community, with many people calling her brain dead, and many more people calling her very difficult. I can understand both sides of this. She has access to a ton of stuff that Mishimas have never had before. A generic down forward 2 mid launcher, like 4 different stances, a neutral controlling forward forward 2 that's plus on block and transitions into stance, her various cartwheels and cheesy strings, it's easy to see why so many people were cautious about calling her difficult. But if you ask me, after playing with her a lot, she is very difficult, just in a different way than the other Mishimas. She has all the standard Mishima tools you could need, a 13 frame electric like Kazuya, a flash punch combo that transitions into stance pressure, a strong hell sweep, but like Jin, doesn't rely on these tools nearly as much as the other Mishimas do. 
Don't get me wrong, having a good electric and wave dash is still absolutely important on this character, and she does require a lot of execution in her combos, but she undoubtedly has a ton of other options and ways to play. Reina's difficulty comes from a different place than the other Mishimas. Hers comes from her sheer amount of options. She relies on using far more of her toolkit than any other Mishima, and her various stance transitions are very hard to master. Using her whole kit in tandem takes a ton of time and practice, but when you do fully understand the character, she becomes incredibly strong. Figuring out when to use all of her different options out of her Ford Ford 2 is way more complicated than most people think, and requires a good mix of reaction time, character knowledge, and timing to execute properly. Reina's difficulty is something you have to experience yourself to actually understand, so I really encourage people who are calling this character brain dead to take some time to pick her up and learn her for yourself. Reina is the most interesting out of all the Mishimas in my eyes, as she is difficult for very different reasons when compared to the rest, while also having the standard difficult Mishima tools. While I am inclined to say that she's overall easier than Kazuya and Devil Jin because of her many privileges in this game, and trust me, she has a lot, she's still certainly a very difficult character to pilot. And watching masterful Reina players use this character is a treat to see. I'm actually very happy with the Mishimas in this game. It feels like they made a clear effort to make all of them feel very distinctive from each other. If you want a simple to play, more beginner friendly Mishima, Jin is a perfect option, and is actually who I recommend for most new players to learn the game with. It feels amazing to start with this character and only use a limited amount of tools, but slowly as you get better, start implementing more and more tools like his 50-50 and his electric. If you want a newer, more modern Tekken approach, you can play Reina being incredibly strong and having some amazing tools that Tekken has just never seen before, while also being very stylish, with some of the coolest voice lines in the game. And if you want classic Mishima difficulty, Kazuya and Devil Jin are right there. They really aimed to please and tried to make sure everyone got something in this game, and I think they succeeded in that. And while I personally do really want to see Heihachi coming back, I think this would be a perfect place to stop with the Mishimas. Every Mishima is difficult in their own rights, and any and all Mishima players get my respect. It isn't easy out there. Seriously, I've been playing almost exclusively Devil Jin and Kazuya recently, and I am actually losing my mind in ranked battle. Send help. But let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with my points about why the Mishimas are so difficult? Or do you still stand by the opinion that Reina is completely brain dead? Let me know in the comments. I'll be down there chatting with you guys as always. But yeah, that's about all I've got for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It's honestly such a huge help and it goes such a long way in supporting the channel. As always, I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon patrons and my YouTube members. Thank you guys so much. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you guys for watching again and I'll see you guys later.